Hello, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Wanya. And I'm Matthew. Our main headlines today are anorexia, cervical cancer vaccination, the missing chef, what you think about school dinners, and the horse that's allergic to grass. Well, let's find out what anorexia is and how it can affect your lives. Over to Naomi and Abby with the explanation on anorexia. Naomi, live in Burnley. Today, we would like to raise awareness of anorexia and bulimia. Anorexia is an eating disorder of which people practically starve themselves to death. Bulimia is also an eating disorder, but people consume loads of food and vomit it back up to prevent themselves from gaining weight. Also, some laxatives are used. Each of these disorders are arising in the teenage years. Most sufferers are not. Anorexia are females, but males are sufferers too. If you ever suffer from anorexia, it is vital that you consult your GP because you will be undernourished and will not be getting enough vitamins and minerals you need. Bulimia can be extremely dangerous and can damage your mouth, teeth, salivary glands and your digestive system due to the acid in your vomit. This cannot be sorted because all the vitamins and minerals needed are being vomited up. There are many warning signs to recognise eating disorders. Some to know are if their body changes visibly and physically, if they know the calorie content of most foods and if they disappear to the toilet during or after meals. Those suffering rarely want to discuss their issues and hate to admit it. If you ever confront someone, know the facts, be gentle and kind and have a plan. Call Childline on 0800 1111 to talk to someone or to seek help and advice with confidence. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. We hope all you anorexia sufferers can benefit from the advice. You've all heard of Jade Goody, but well, she suffered from cervical cancer. Let's go over to Charlotte Madia and Jessica with the report. Hello and welcome to BBC School Reports with Jess, Dinner and Charlotte. Today we are going to talk about cervical cancer and the vaccines that prevent the cancer. We will also be interviewing two schoolgirls aged 13 to ask them their views on the cancer injections. Now off to Dinner with more information. Hi, I'm sure you have all heard of Jade Goody's terrible cancer ordeal. Jade is just one of the many girls who have been diagnosed with cervical cancer. All girls in year 8 are having the three HPV vaccines to prevent them from catching this frightening disease for years to come. HPV stands for the human papillomavirus. There are over 100 types of HPV but only 13 of them are known to cause cancer. Now over to Charlotte who is interviewing some schoolgirls. Now, we're going to talk to schoolgirl Vima from St John Thursbury Community College with, with her views on the vaccine. So Vima, are you happy with being offered the chance to take the vaccine? Yeah, I feel very protected over the cancer with the vaccines. What did your parents feel about having the injection? Um, they, were, they thought it was a really good idea and they were there for me when I was having it. Okay, thank you Vima. Now we'll talk to another teen, teenage girl, Wania. Hello Wania. Hello. Do you think that Jay Goody has been an inspiration about to having the injection? Yes, definitely. Why? Because I didn't like injections and I didn't really want to have the injection, but seeing what Jay had to go through, really, it seems the injections are nothing. It just helps you. Okay, thank you, Maria. This is Charlotte from the BBC School Reports, back to the studio. Thank you. We hope all you girls will benefit from the advice. Well, Claudia Lawrence went missing last Thursday and she's been missing ever since. Now over to Abdin and Madia to explain the disappearance. Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about a woman who has gone missing while going to work. Claudia Lawrence was last seen a week ago. Claudia Lawrence, 36 of age, vanished at around 5.30am on Thursday after she left home to walk three miles to her job as a chef at the University of York. She took no purse or passport. Her family say her disappearance was out of character. Police are searching her garden and the local area. Fortunately, the police have caught her on CCTV camera on Wednesday afternoon. She was last seen wearing a white garment or t-shirt, blue skinny jeans and white trainers for footwear. She has blondy brown hair and brown eyes. She is thought to have been carrying a small blue or green rucksack containing her chef's whites. The mysterious thing is that she was kidnapped after she got a job promotion, but she declined. Well, now we are going to talk to a student from the University of York. So, Abby, how would you feel like if a loved one were missing? Well, I would search for her, contact her in any way, call the police and inform all my neighbours that she went missing. 
Well, here are some tips if you want to notice that someone went missing. Search for him or her, inform the community, let your family and friends know. If you can't find them in 24 hours, contact the police and then hope for the best. If you have any ideas, go to the BBC blog at www.bbc.co.uk, then click on blog. Thank you for watching. I'm Maria. And I'm Abdin. Back to you at the studio. Thank you. We hope she is safe and well, wherever she is. And now over to our reporting team with their report about school dinners. Hello, I'm Zishan and I've come down to Unity College to ask the unit catering manager what she thinks of the school lunches. Hello, Ingrid. Hello, Aisha. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No. Okay. What do you think of the school dinners at the moment, now that the government has introduced a healthy option? I think that they're changing for the better, but we will have a problem later on with the children not liking the meals on service and fetching pack lunches. What do you concentrate on more? Quality or healthiness? Healthiness. What do you think of the prices the food's been sold for? At Unity College we actually have a good price in where we have a meal deal so a student can get a sweet and a main meal for £1.60, so it's good value. Last question now, do you think the food has any effect on their work? Yes I do, I think that it improves the pupils concentration levels, uh, their attention and the energy levels which they all need to do for studying. Thank you. Thank you. I went around to Unity College to interview two pupils and one teacher on their opinions on the new changes of the even healthier school lunches. I think they're very good in them being healthier. That helps kids concentrate and if they're not getting healthy meals at home then they're getting them at school. I think it's a lot better because I never used to bother about eating healthy but uh, I've really changed my diet so it means I can eat healthy at school as well as when I go home in the evening. I don't really care about eating the healthier food, so I'll just go to the cheapest one instead. Overall, there were two opinions which were people either liked it or weren't bothered at all. I'm Zishan, reporting for BBC News Live. Thank you for that very interesting insight into what people think about school dinners. Well, over to the sport updates with our sport correspondents, Lewis and William. Thank you, Matthew. Now to the fixtures. Manchester United take on Aston Villa. Manchester United need to win to secure their title hopes. Liverpool play Fulham. Liverpool need three points for a chance of winning the title. Arsenal take on Manchester City. Arsenal are currently in top form, but Manchester City beat them 3-0 earlier on in the season. Chelsea play Newcastle. Newcastle need, need a win to avoid relegation. Now for the rugby results. In the Six Nations Cup, Ireland beat Wales 17-15. England beat Scotland 26-12 in the last game of the season. Now for the tennis updates. Britain's number one, Andy Murray, has just confirmed that he will be playing in the Queen's Club. The Scotsman was embarrassingly defeated by the world number one, Rafael Nadal, in the Indian Wells Masters 1000 final, 6-1 six, six and 6-2. Well, that's all for the updates. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Lewis and William. We hope all you sport fans are kept up to date. Now let's see what the weather's doing with Zeeshan. Thank you, Carla. Hello, I'm Zeeshan, and here is today's weather. Later on today, we will be seeing heavy rainfall, so get all your umbrellas if you are going out because you don't want to get wet. The maximum temperature tomorrow will be 5 degrees Celsius, whereas on the other hand, the minimum temperature will be minus 1 degree Celsius. Wind speed is predicted to be at a maximum speed of about 26 miles per hour. The wind is going to be directed in the west. Tonight is going to expect large rain showers moving through the area overnight. Tomorrow we'll unfortunately be expecting heavy rain showers which will be ex expected from time to time, any time. Minimum temperature tomorrow will be 3 degrees Celsius whereas the maximum temperature will be 7 degrees Celsius. Wind speed will be at a speed of 31 miles per hour. Saturday ex is expecting sleet showers so wrap up warm. The minimum temperature will be 2 degrees Celsius and the maximum temperature will be 5 degrees Celsius. Wind speed will be at a maximum speed of 18 miles per hour. So please take care if you are going out today. That is all from me. I'm back to Matthew at the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Zishan. Let's finish off with a bit of a laugh from Rima and Wania about their story about the allergies of a horse. Hello, I'm Rima and this is Wania. And to finish off the news is the humorous story of the horse that is allergic to grass. Fabio Padora spends her life encased in a high-tech coral, which means she does have some freedom to go outside. Owner Emily Pierce, 24, first discovered the problem when Pandora developed a large itchy lump on the side of her stomach at the stables in Highway Comb, Buckinghamshire. Owner Emily Pierce assumed it was a flower bite and kept treating her with ointment, but it did get better. 
Also, the horse was in constant distress, and despite being given steroids, stayed poor, spreading everywhere else. After numerous tests, it was discovered that poor Pandora was allergic to every type of grass. Pandora's owner says her horse is now fed with a special diet of sugar beef chaff and soya oil, and a dozen antihistamine tablets every day. A vet who specialises in equine care told Sky News Online, Horses entire digestive system have been geared towards grass for thousands of years so it's almost unheard of for something like this to happen. Well it's something everyone can live with as long as it's kept away from grass for the rest of its life. I am Reem and this is one year. Thank you. Thank you for that funny story about Pandora the horse. This is Sergeant Thursby Community College reporting for BBC School Report. Thank you for watching.